Welcome to Haltech NSP Elite Training Part 15. In this training module, we're going to be exploring using the oscilloscope function found with inner NSP software. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our oscilloscope trace feature within our Haltech NSP software. Now this feature is something that's been added to the NSP that was not present in the ESP software for use with our elite systems. This was difficult to troubleshoot maybe a no start condition or an engine misfire without actually being able to detect the cam and crank pattern and how the Haltech was processing the individual teeth count or the pulses coming from our cam or crank sensors. So the the oscilloscope function is a very welcome feature here with the NSP software and it allows a lot of troubleshooting capabilities if you understand how to use it. This tutorial we're going to be taking a look at understanding the basics with the oscilloscope, just getting used to working within the interface and then we'll be able to use what we learn here in this tutorial moving into the next two tutorials going in and programming uh, working with various different types of cam or crank patterns and specifically to the sensors that we're trying to configure, whether it's a Hall effect or a mag VR type of sensor. Let's jump in here and take a look at our oscilloscope feature, and then we'll start to talk about the basics and the fundamentals here of understanding how this feature works within our NSP software with an elite system. So right now, I'm gonna jump in here up to the top under the oscilloscope feature. I'm gonna click on this, it's gonna open it up. This is going to be pretty standard if you're used to working with, let's say, an, a uh, standalone oscilloscopes who have a, a either a handheld oscilloscope, you might have one that's a PC based oscilloscope, you might even have the old school uh, big display oscilloscope where you can work off a bench, a bench oscilloscope I guess you could call it. Um, so this is going to have a similar feel and functionality to a, a, an oscilloscope if you're familiar with working with. If you have no experience working with oscilloscope that's fine, that'll get your feet wet working with this oscilloscope feature in the software. So the very first thing we're going to find here is that we have these four different lines in this graphical plot here in our window. This corresponds to the channels that we can set right here. So we see channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. Down at the bottom we find these toggle buttons that are able to turn on or off a channel. Now in this case we have our channel 1 here set to trigger voltage. That's the roll output from our crank sensor. So the trigger is known as our crank sensor. And then we have our trigger input state. This is the filtered or processed trigger signal. So we take the roll, the Haltech processes it depending on how the program details we've programmed for the cam and crank patterns over here in our engine configuration side and in a navigation tree. So as long as we've set everything properly there, the trigger input state should be counting every roll pulse into an actual pulse for the processing side of things. So it's going to be the process signal, this is the raw signal. We have channel 3 set to home voltage, that's home is known as our cam sensor input, and then our home input state, that's that process signal. So we can see the raw signal, the process signal, and what that allows us to do is just verify every time we're getting, let's say, a crank pulse from our sensor, we're going to actually have a processed associated pulse that the Haltech is able to work with here and able to uh, take a look at. So in this particular case, as we're looking through all of our various options here, we have the ability to go in and change our channels if we want to go in and select maybe a different channel other than trigger voltage, we could select it out of this massive list here. Because we're focusing on the next two tutorials on setting up our cam and crank patterns um, and setting up all the de details associated to the engine we're trying to control. In this case, we're not going to go in here and we're not going to change any of these. We'll just leave them to the defaulted values. The next thing we're going to find here is our scale. The scale is going to be how it plots the individual channel here in terms of the height of the actual output. Um, so we'll look at that when we're going in and uh, we actually start to crank over the engine and we start to plot in here to our oscilloscope. If we go down here a little bit, a little bit further, we're going to find we have our Y offsets. This controls where the actual lanes are in our window. If I go here, this is our channel 1, I can go in here and move it up or down in my window here. So if I grab this, we can see it can move that up or down. That might be something we want to do if we want to overlay, let's say, a home raw voltage to a crank raw voltage. We could go overlay these and get an idea of where the home signal, the home pulse happens relative to our trigger signal or the crank signal. Sometimes we get an overlapping portion 
of the signals and that can create some processing problems for the whole tech. So this allows us just to move our lines up and down. I do want to also say here, as we're talking about this, we can turn off our lanes of data. This completely gets rid of it in our toggle switches. It's another basic functionality if we want to get rid of a channel just to take a look at some things to get that cleared off our screen here, we're able to do that. Okay, so the next area down here is our trigger channel. The trigger channel is looking in this case and defaulted to engine angle. This is going to be, in this case, the trigger threshold, one degree. So engine angle is gonna be degrees of engine movement and we'll find the angle here, or the, the engine angle because it's set here, is gonna be at one degree. What this is going to do is set as a threshold that we have to exceed for the oscilloscope to actually start to run and to work. So right now we see this. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.